Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 10 of the Business Line podcast. I'm your co-host, Brian Collins. And I'm Manny. And that is Manny, that's true star I of the show. I said that. I know, I know, I know. Jeez, calm down. You just uh, just have to sound important every time, huh? Uh, yeah, I ha- some I have to be important somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. All right. So, hey, episode ten. Our guest today is Valerie Trapunsky. She is the CEO and founder of a company called Chatter Boss, which strives to solve customer needs through a combination of intelligent technology, intelligent systems, and most importantly, intelligent people. That's a lot of. Strategic word, strategic use of the word intelligence. Yeah, intelligence. So their primary service is VAs, or otherwise known as virtual assistants. These 100% remote assistants are handpicked for your administrative needs, work style, and budget. Valerie founded this company back in 2017 after a decade spent working as a top-level assistant for A-list celebrities and as the chief of staff for high net worth individuals and CEOs. And as you're going to find out later, she did some pretty cool traveling as well. During the time, she developed a passion for effective problem solving and became committed to bringing the same level of excellence to solo entrepreneurs, business owners, and executives. Her core values are that they do the right thing, that they take the lead, and that they care about the people they're working for. I mean, you said everything, so what's left for me? But anyway, you know, like it sounds like, you know, and after talking to her, she's deeply passionate about bringing the same level of assistant support that A-listers enjoy to startups and entrepreneurs, all while shining a light on the crucial role that assistants can play in running and scaling a business. So that's valuable. Yeah, it's going to be amazing. Are you ready to, to bring her in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Hey, Valerie, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you guys doing? We're doing great. We're really happy to finally get to meet you. We're happy to have you on the show. Welcome to the podcast. Very nice to meet you. I love your friend there in the middle. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Does he have a name? (laughs) I see you. So this is Olivia. Um, We named her about a month back. We were doing, doing some email marketing campaigns and I didn't want to be the person doing all the emailing and having all the replies come to me. So Mm -hmm. my team and I got together and said, let's create a different person. And I'm like, hey, how about we just we just name our our mascot, our logo, Olivia, and have all of our marketing emails come from Olivia. So when we send out marketing emails from Olivia, it's actually from the owl. It's smart. It's a delegation (laughs) strategy. You can delegate to people. You could delegate to uh, people that are real or people that you make up. But (laughs) that's right. That's right. So and of which you know a ton about. So Valerie, let's get right into talking a little bit about. I want to learn about you. And so tell me a bit about how you got into this industry that you're into right now. What's your journey? Yeah, so I started my career actually in advertising. And then while I was looking for a different advertising job, I thought that I would be a CEO of an advertising agency one day. Uh, I had an opportunity to interview for a personal assistant position. And I never saw myself going down that route. This was not something in my career plans. But you know, as we all know, right, like we plan and the universe or God or whoever, right, Right. like laughs laughs at our (laughs) at our um, at our plans. And so I ended up taking a role as a personal assistant. And it kind of spiraled from there, I just kept get I, I kept having opportunities to work with really interesting people and I got to like this very small niche as a personal assistant and a chief of staff and got to learn a bunch of different things that I never imagined go on in households for A-list celebrities, high net worth individuals. And that's what inspired the Chatterboss journey. Chatterboss, we are a remote executive assistant company. So we work with businesses, entrepreneurs, we pair you to a virtual executive assistant. But the desire came from how can I replicate the experience that the high net worth that A-list celebrities have in leveraging their assistance because it's so powerful mm. and bring that to entrepreneurs and business owners. And so it's been seven years. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> wow, that that's really cool. So What's been your biggest challenge that people bring to you when they're looking to kind of solve their, you know, assistant problems? You know, some people already have assistant. Like, I love how you say it, right? (laughs) Because it also tells me where, you know, where in your delegation journey you are, that Mm -hmm. you're someone that does delegate, right? Because what we know, if you are going to 
delegate and uh, be inside, which all of us have to, right? We don't really have a choice. Um, but then you have problems coming along, right? Of course. So it's either you've delegated before and you've come into road bumps, or uh, you are somebody that is just starting to delegate for the first time. And then you don't know what the road bumps are, but you'd really like to know because you want to set yourself on the right foot. So just depending on where a person is in their delegation journey will kind of you know, dictate the biggest thing uh, that's challenging for them. Um, I think that for me, watching entrepreneurs, the biggest thing that I see is um, the biggest hurdle that people have to come and overcome is psychological of whether I accept the fact that the only way to growth is delegation. Mm -hmm. And until you accept that, you are thinking that it's optional. So you give something away, then you take it back. Something doesn't work you don't try again and you end up in this cycle. So I think one of the biggest blockers, but then the people who have got it, like, you know, that you have to delegate and that's part of your entrepreneurial DNA going forward, then, then it's a lot of fun, right? Cause then we can accelerate and really support. Yeah. I mean, I went through this just over a year ago, like the stack of things that I was taking care of way outside of what was really, uh, I needed to be doing right. Mm -hmm as as you know a partner in the company and man he's like you just you got to find somebody to do these things I mean, for you You realize that in one year it took me nine years to realize that fact i mean i yeah. started you know i started my business in 2001 yeah till 2009 i was doing everything myself and i was not able to trust anyone i mean okay i knew that you know these things needs to be delegated but at one point in 2009 i decided okay you know like if i'm stuck i cannot grow I need to trust people. I need to find good people so that I can delegate my work and, you know, concentrate on the business part, growing the business. So, yeah, delegating is important, but finding the right person, the person that you can trust, I think that's where your company comes in. So, how do you, you know, like, okay, all these good clients segue, that man. you have. That's a really good segue, yeah. by the way. I didn't even, so, even plan that. Yeah. So, all these people, <laughs> all these people that you uh, work for, your clientele is high net individual people. So they need people who they can trust. So how do you, you know, like when you hire people, how do you, what's the criteria that you use to hire these VAs? It's a really good question because one of the things that really stands Chatterboss apart and where is my passion and, and my company's focus is on the relationships. So we spend a lot of time thinking who is the right person and we think about that uh, when it relates to the skill set. So, of course, mm -hmm. we're looking for top talent that are dedicated to the executive assistant journey and career. Um, today, we live in a world where a lot of people enter the executive assistant, you know, the vir especially the virtual executive assistant space because it's OK, I have a laptop and I maybe don't think that it requires any um, additional training. And so I'm going to be a digital nomad and I'm going to do all of this. Right. So so there is that when you're you know looking at hiring. Um, but, you know, so we're looking for people that are passionate, excited, dedicated to being executive assistants so that they can bring to the forefront um, options for you when it comes to uh, optimization, when it comes to efficiency. So that's one piece of it. But then the other piece, we look a lot at psychometrics. So over the last seven years that we've been operating, psychometrics has been uh, one of the key things that we hang our hat on. And so I am really grateful for all of the clients, all of the assistants that have let us experiment with them over the years, because what I now know is that I'm not looking for a particular personality profile. Absolutely not. What I am looking for is a, the right match for the right person. So I know that every person, every assistant that has committed to the journey and whose skill set is top notch, no matter their personality, we're going to find them the right person, the right entrepreneur. Um, and so it's, it's part of our vision, it's part of our mission. And it's also, it's been a lot of fun. So I collect all these different, like all of these brilliant, but very different personality type people. And then whoever you are as the entrepreneur, when you come in, we're going to give you the, the person that you're going to have the, the likelihood of the least amount of friction. 
Okay, so we can't just gloss over this. We can't just pass this on. You said psychometrics. Yeah. What in the world is psychometrics? <laughs> <laughs> so when we're looking at psychometrics, it is the uh, groupings of character traits inside of your personality. Um, so we are in psychometrics. We don't know exactly how you're going to respond manny or brian you know to something very particular but i will know the general direction that your personality will take are you somebody that whose mind thinks more like a checkbox or are you somebody that's more flexible um, are you somebody uh, that works really well individually or are you someone that's going to work well in a group and so and so on and so forth so we look at all of these groupings of traits uh, in order to understand both our assistants their motivators the way that they will work optimally but then we want to pair them to individuals and you know th that are going to be the right match and the biggest thing that i say is that um we have to put on a mask so often, both as entrepreneurs and assistants, right? So when I come into any conversation, I want you to see me a certain way. I'm going to hide certain things about myself. And really, that's exhausting. So what we're trying to do is bridge the relationships in a way that you can be as an entrepreneur fully yourself. So you can say, look, this is a mess and I don't have to hide it. It's a mess. <laughs> And the assistant can also bring their full selves and say, you know, this is what I operate and this is what I need from you to be successful. So it's also, it, it, it's not just the match, but it's also educating how those personalities have an interplay so that you're kind of walking in eyes wide open in terms of what you're going to get in that relationship. So you basically, you interview your people, you know, the, the VS that you have, but you interview you some kind of you know do some analysis for your uh, of your clients also before you match these people up and That's it. how open are these clients for this these analysis i mean you know like as in as if you know like business entrepreneur if you come you know like i come to you ask you know like i want this person and you start you know like uh, asking questions to me i mean I won't take it, you know, like in the right sense in, initially without understanding, you know, why you're asking these questions. So how these net, you know, high net individuals, you know, like behave or, you know, like act when something like this is happening. I mean, have you faced any you challenges? You just lay them down on one of those couches, <laughs> you sit next to them, you start yeah. asking them questions about their mom and their relationship with their father. Yep. And, and then it's, they're, okay. That's nice. it. Uh, <laughs> I could have it, taken that in a bad way. <laughs> it's also a really good question because while all of our assistants take our character assessment, not all of our clients do. It's optional. Um, but I find that a good percentage of our clients do choose to take it. And the reason for that is, well, I think, look, you know, your company, your marketing attracts the kind of, you know, uh, entrepreneur that... Um, is interested in this. And that's one of our biggest perks. So people come in uh, seeking this and they're more open. Um, and I think it's one of the reasons they choose us. We have some entrepreneurs that say, look, maybe it's interesting, but not right now. I, I can't take the time. It does take time. It takes about an hour you know, to fill it out. So you're absolutely right. Um, and then we do our best, right? Um, but I always encourage, you know, the the the, be the better foundation that you can lay when you and and you're working with a company that's offering you, right? So it's an hour of your time, and then we're gonna make a stronger pairing. So you know, not everyone chooses it, but but a, but a good chunk of people do, and um, yeah, and then we get to have these conversations. So those those good chunk of people who chooses it the success rate is higher for them, right? You know, like finding the right person and personality, of course, right? Yeah, so we're able to, uh, not only is our success rate higher in terms of the matching, so I can say you're gonna have less friction because I am pairing based on certain things that I now know about you and the assistant, but also, um, 
because I'm look, look, I'm looking at so many different things, right? I'm looking, like I said, I'm looking at the skill set. I am uh, looking at your software. I'm looking at, you know, uh, industry experience. Uh, sometimes, you know, time zone is important for people. Our assistants are US based, but, you know, East Coast or West Coast or, you know, certain preferences that people have. So, so I have that long list, plus I have the character. So not always, the truth is that not always is the character going to be that perfect, you know, the, the, you know, there's going to be some give and take, but the biggest thing that you get is that you have an opportunity to go in eyes wide open into that relationship and say, you know what, on these things, you're very different. So watch out because you're the right match. You're the right match because of this, this, and this, but here, this is, this is going to be challenging in your communication. So watch out. Or when you see, you know, Manny do this, don't get upset about it, right? That's not personal, not don't get upset, right? That's not personal. That's just part of the way that he operates mm -hmm. and you can do this. So there's this educational component where we'll train you on uh, how to work on differences as well, because in a personal relationship, you actually want all of the parameters to be as close as possible. It reduces friction, right? In a um, in that kind of sense. But in a work relationship, sometimes on purpose, you want two people to be different. You want to be different than your assistant because there there's a benefit to that. But then also there's a challenge in communication. So how do we both know what that looks like so that uh, we don't get stopped by it? Good. That's interesting. So so. You know, the VA industry, let's let's go a little bit wider on, in breadth here in, in this question. So the VA industry is, over the last 10, 15 years has really kind of exploded, right? I can remember, man, back in maybe 2009, 2010, you know, starting to hear about it and it was getting really big in countries across seas, Philippines and things like that. And it's still, it still really is. Uh, you know, what do you, what would you say are the, the most common myths that people have about this industry? One of the biggest myths is that an assistant um, should be the Jill or the Jack of all trades. Mm. So that be means that, it yeah. <laughs> I'm good at um, nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. And so um, people get very disappointed often and they have, so, so, and, and it's part of, you know, what creates, a, you know, this friction in, in my book, I write um, that, from the perspective both of the entrepreneur and the assistant and a like because there is such pressure from the industry um and from the entrepreneurs like oh if you don't know it figure it out and you know there's even you know people that will say you know uh, the way that i know whether like you're the right person for me is i give you these like trick questions and mm -hmm. a bunch of different areas i'm going to figure out if you can figure it out but the truth is um, that screening method isn't uh, an effective screening method, depending on the kind of things that you're actually wanting to get from that person. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of the times we put assistants in the position of like, you have to be really good, like analytically and creatively, and you have to have these like million skill sets. And that puts the pressure a few things happen either the assistants go and they try to learn it and you know kind of figure it out and that burns into your budget um you know or you know they they um like they won't bill for the time that they're doing it or like they stop the work right so like many like adverse effects when that happens um so we really have to be clear about what who we're bringing on why we're bringing them on um and allow them to have weaknesses as well <laughs> okay so i uh Playing off that same question, kind of the next one I would I would say is what should people be wa watching out for? Kind of like warning signs if they're looking to work with a, a VA or, or work with a company like yours. What are some of the warning signs that you know that things things might not go the way they're going to expect? So if if you are um, you know and, and and it's kind of like based on like your background. So if you're someone that you know you could say about yourself that like you're still a beginner or like you're, you know, if you on a scale of one to 10, you're like a six or a seven and delegating, like you still have something to learn. Um, for me, the biggest red flag is 
people saying, look, I don't have any questions. I'm going to jump right in. If you're working with a company that doesn't ask you questions, if you're hiring an assistant directly, that's not asking you any questions. And it's like, you know, whatever you want, I'll do. Yes, you want that compliance, um, you know, and you, you want like easy communication, but sometimes people get really turned entrepreneurs get really turned off like when a person when when an assistant starts to create boundaries and expectations and warnings they're like oh maybe you're a little bit closed-minded but that's not that's not it at all uh what it is is that that's a green flag because what that says is that that person is prepared to make this role which is very ambiguous because it doesn't have a template and they're going to create barriers inside of that position for you so that you can express your expectations and then they could live into it so not asking enough quite like it should be tedious in the beginning mm -hmm. it should be hard it should feel like you're building that foundation and if it doesn't feel that way it's just a question of you know am i handing off with the most solid foundation possible that makes sense i mean when i'm hiring somebody if i'm interviewing people and there's no questions i'm like okay you have any questions for me and they're like no not right now i'm good I'm like, uh, you're probably not going to, you know, <laughs> right? Because you, you haven't put enough time and thought and effort into actually trying to figure out and get things. Because if you're really interested, you're going to have some questions. That's it. So in this world of like influencer marketing, I mean, you've worked with some people that are kind of, you know, we're not going to make a name people and stuff like that, but you've worked with some people that are kind of a big deal. Let's just say that, you know, what's it, what's it like kind of working in that world of influencer marketing and um, you know, dealing with personalities that are larger than life sometimes maybe, or yeah. I think that the, the biggest thing there, you know, regardless of the capacity that you're in is being able to take the time to understand that world that that person's in that person a lot of the time if they've reached the top of the echelon in their particular niche and you know um they're 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 really widely recognized they often have very particular um ways that they lead their life they have a particular okay. way that they eat the way that they do their daily rituals they have a they're, they're very particular. And the reason for that is um, there is so much discipline in uh, achieving what you want to achieve at those highest levels. And I think that sometimes we may be coming into that world and you can, if you have the, you know, the, the privilege and the opportunity to enter that space, you automatically, it, it's easy to kind of like make really quick judgments mm -hmm. and it's really easy to not understand why are these like things happening, but you need to kind of like slow down and really understand what is like the ecosystem of that particular world. Because very often, like that's why I would see, I was never the only assistant. I would have two, three, four other assistants on the team running a very particular orchestrated uh, kind of ship and it was fascinating. Yeah. So uh, like this, this, uh, I, good job, good job in being edifying in the way you explain that. I think that's, that's cool that because it shows me that you have perspective on people's lives and just because things are weird or quirky doesn't mean they are weird or mm -hmm. quirky. That's like the, the idea of having discipline to achieve certain results. Yeah. You're going to stick with those disciplines. So like without incriminating yourself or anybody that you ever worked with, what is the, maybe not silliest. I'm trying to think what, what's something noteworthy that you kind of experienced that you're like, wow, I am, this is a big change. This is, this is, I'm no longer in Kansas anymore, guys. Now that I'm doing this, is there something that you can like share without again, given mm -hmm. too much information? Or I don't want you to get in trouble or anything, <laughs> but, um, something that for, you know, for me and Manny and for our audience, it'd be like, wow, that's pretty, pretty wild. The, for me, the, the biggest lifestyle thing that was different, of course, right? Like I'm, I'm coming from, uh, you know, an advertising world. It was, you know, how people travel, right? I, mm. I think maybe that that's the biggest thing, right? Like how people travel, how easily you can get from A to B. Um, and what those, you know, um, what those like gatherings like look like and then I would have to plan them as well. So that was really fascinating because I, you know, I, I, there were 
places in the world that I didn't know existed <laughs> mm -hmm. that, you know, you could wake up in the morning and go to. And so that was, I think that that was one of my most favorite parts about that trip, right? Uh, about um, that role. Like I got to go to Antarctica. I got to go to what? Polynesia. We went to tiny, tiny little remote places that it's impossible, you know, to get to or really, really hard to get to um, in a commercial way. And so, you know, that's something that I really treasure having those uh, opportunities. What was the coolest place you went to and why? Why was it particularly awesome to you? I think it's Antarctica, right? Yeah. I mean, that's such a journey. Nobody goes there. Like, go? <laughs> people go there. <laughs> now I know that people go there. And we went penguin there, watching. Are there penguins in Antarctica or is it just nothing? Yes, there's penguins. There's okay. lots of penguins and they are amazing. They, uh, what was really amazing there it was that it's so untouched by humans mm. that you are around these animals that they don't perceive you as a threat and they come so close and you get to really, um, you know, kind of watch their lives and fascinating, but also like a big takeaway for me there was that you also can't intervene. So like we saw, um, you know, animals being born, you know, mm. we saw some dying, we saw fighting where, you know, and you can't step in and say, well, let's save, the this doesn't look fair. So th they right. are like people, like they, they come together and penguins particularly, like they, they really help each other. Fascinating, yeah, really, really fascinating. Antarctica, penguins, Yeah, that's cool. See, that's cool, I don't know, maybe that's, that's wild, that's really cool. Okay, um, let's jump, let's jump to a new fun thing here. Thanksgiving, do you celebrate Thanksgiving? Yes. <laughs> Friends, family, what do you like, what do you typically do for Thanksgiving? What's your plan? Usually with Thursday? usually with family, we just moved uh, to a new city, so we're gonna be with uh, maybe with Antarctica. Friends this year, but it's all about food. <laughs> we're, we're celebrating Thanksgiving with the penguins. Yeah, with the penguins <laughs> yeah. in Antarctica. Yeah, we're That's having lots fun. of fish. Uh -huh. <laughs> Small fish, big fish. Okay, so traditional Thanksgiving kind of meal setting. No. Or is it exotic? <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if it's exotic, but look, I moved. To the U.S. from Ukraine when we okay. moved here, okay. um, you know, as part of this, you know, the immigrant experience was like, hey, you get these holidays, and one of them yeah. is Thanksgiving. Okay, and you have to make a turkey. So, you know, everything was like with like a Ukrainian twist, right? Okay. And you still have like all these things, and so not until I got much older, where I got invited to homes of american families that do like traditional like thanksgiving things did i realize like what those meals are supposed to be like yeah. uh, because for us it was like turkey and all of our usual things <laughs> yeah okay so this thursday thanksgiving's coming up what's what's your favorite thing to have at thanksgiving what's your favorite part of the meal I'm not the one who's cooking you <laughs> so far in my life. I haven't been the like one. Like you're thinking, okay, Thanksgiving's coming up. I really hope this is on the table. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Some desserts. Some, some desserts. Something okay. related to desserts. Yeah. Maybe some so chocolate you, pudding. Yeah. Or <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So you said like you, you come from Ukraine. So do you have festivals over there? Like, you know, what is the favorite holiday, Ukrainian holiday that you celebrate over here? Uh, my favorite holiday here. I love the New Year. I love the New Year. Okay. New Year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Everybody so that, can get around that, you know. No. Yes. What about Ukrainian holidays? I mean, is there any like particular like Thanksgiving is like mostly American, right? Yeah. It's all. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all American. So what's what's the like equivalent of like Thanksgiving or you know Christmas for a U for Ukrainian? People? Yeah. Look, for us, it's um, we spend the New Year a lot. Uh, so oh, okay. we, you know, that was the uh, the holiday that was, um, you know, where you spend time with family and you are, um, you know, making all of the big meals. And so, yeah, th th that that's what it was for us. Okay. So desserts, and she mentioned chocolate pudding. So if you're <laughs> listening. If your family's watching, make some chocolate pudding for Valerie. Uh, if I was there, I'd make a pe I'd make you a pecan pie and a sweet potato pie because I'm from down south and that's what we uh -huh. like to eat. So, um, <laughs> well, all right. Um, 
if time allows, we're kind of popping up right. We just hit 30 minutes. I know you got a, I know you got a jet. So let's finish one thing, Manny. Um, it's a sad day for Manny. He's a, he's a big cricket fan. I don't know if cricket is popular in Ukraine. Uh, it's not super popular in the U.S. yet. It's I'm not sure. It's a sad day. I mean, you know, like I'm satisfied with the performance. This. Yeah. No, he's, I, I this am. This is a coping mechanism. Let's do some. <laughs> Let's do some uh, some some psychometrics on your coping mechanism for <laughs> India losing the World Cup to Austria. But um, I feel for you. We'll hug later. It's going to be okay. Oh yeah, I'm looking forward to it's that. It's going to be okay. Um, but <laughs> cricket, they didn't win cricket. What's your favorite sport, Valerie? Are you a sport person? Um, not really. I okay. I, I became. Um, you know, I never really watched sports, but I got really into running. Uh, a couple of years ago and so you know now that's really you know close to my heart when i see people running marathons when i see people accomplishing their goals um you know really interesting from an endurance perspective um yeah i think that as entrepreneurs we have to pick some some sport right even if we were not athletic before um we need to have an outlet and uh physical yeah, stressor athletic. right yeah it is yes well that was yeah. great well I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna call it. This has been fantastic. I wish we had more time. We're gonna bring you back someday. Um, your company is gonna explode even more so than it has now, and so is ours because of what we've learned to, from you today about, in particular, psychometrics. Um, so, but no, this has been great, Valerie. Thank you so much for your time, and thank you everybody for watching episode ten of the Business Line podcast. Thanks. Thank you so much.